Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help folks find high-value, hi-fi, home theater, and headphone equipment. And today, we're going to talk about putting together your first hi-fi system, first ever. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's put together your first hi-fi system. So the idea for this video actually came from a comment. It was either an email, no, I think it was a comment. And they talked about where do I put what? How do I even begin? And I started thinking about that and I started my journey when you know, in the mid 80s, early 80s maybe even, and I wanted a CD player. So I had to figure out what else I needed because you couldn't just stick the CD into a speaker. CD player had to go into something else and then the speakers had to be connected to that. So I started learning at a, well, relatively young age. But if you don't know how to put together a system, don't feel bad about it. Point being, nobody came into this world knowing everything there is to know about how to build a hi-fi system. So never feel bad if you don't know. That's what this video is for. This is going to be very basic. So this video might not be for everybody. If you're new, you may get some value out of it. Every system fundamentally is made up of three things, a source, an amplifier, and a speaker. In some cases, that can all be in one box. It can be a powered speaker. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about sources. My hair's a little bit messed up today. A little unruly. I need to get a haircut. Sources, anything that you can push play on. It's kind of a source. So computer, CD player, tape deck, your phone, a streamer, a turntable, no play button, but you put the needle in there. So any of those, that's where the music's at. We need to get the music out of that into the stereo. So let's talk about digital first. So let's talk about if you're using your phone. If you're using your phone, your amplifier needs to have a Bluetooth connection if that's how you're going to get the music from your phone over to the amplifier. Or you can use something like AirPlay. So that either needs to be in your amp or you need to have a little module. Now some people will say a DAC is a source. And in certain situations, it is. DAC is a digital to analog converter. But the source is actually where the music is housed. And sometimes the music is housed in the ether of the internet. But I'm going to call a source whatever plays the music. So let's talk about DAC. Digital music comes from a computer, comes from a DVD player, whatever it is. A lot of receivers already have internal DACs inside them. And if it has an HDMI connection, and if it has little optical connections, uh, optical connection, looks like that right there. So if it has one of those, it already has a DAC in it. This little amplifier already has a DAC in it. It has Bluetooth. It has a USB input, a optical input, even has a, a coaxial input, subwoofer out. So this is one of those devices that's kind of an all-in-one device. Has a DAC, so you can hook your computer up to this. Has your speaker outs. Has Bluetooth. So this is one of those devices that can handle a lot. And you can manage all of that. So the sources would hook up directly to this if they were digital sources. But this also has an, an RCA in. So anything that has an RCA out, you will be able to connect to this. So anything that has a USB optical or coaxial digital out can connect to this. Those are integrated amplifiers, amplifiers with DACs. So let's just do a for instance. You have all your music on your computer. You would connect a generally USB cable from your computer to the DAC. And a DAC can be a standalone DAC like this SMSL M500 Mark II, or the DAC could be part of an amplifier like this topping MX3. I forgot the name of it. So you take your computer, put it into your DAC or your DAC amp, put it in your DAC, and then you would run RCA cables from here into your amplifier, unless it was already built into your amplifier. So not all amplifiers have DACs in them. So if you want computer, computer, 
to DAC, DAC to amp, amp to speakers. And that's pretty much how all of this goes. Let's talk about turntables. Turntables can be a bit confusing because you can't just hook directly from the turntable to an amplifier and have it sound good. Turntables need more amplification, so they have what's called a phono preamp. Sometimes people call that a phono stage or a phono amp. Some turntables have those built in, so you're good. You would just run an RCA cable, and again, those RCA cables generally are white and red. For a turntable that has a built-in phono preamp, you can just run RCAs from there directly into your amp or directly into your powered speaker and you're good. If your turntable doesn't have a phono preamp in it, just check the back of your uh, integrated amp or your receiver. Some of them already have phono inputs that has a phono stage or phono preamplifier in it. And one of the ways you can look at that is, look for the input that says phono, and if there's a little screw next to it, that's the grounding screw. Chances are you already have a phono stage in your receiver or integrated amplifier if you've got one of those little grounding posts. So in that sense, you would go turntable into receiver or integrated amp into the phono stage, connect the ground. If your turntable already has a phono preamp built in, you would go simply phono preamp to your amplifier. If you don't have a phono preamplifier in the turntable itself, and you don't have one in your receiver or your amplifier, you would need what is a standalone phono preamp little box like this on the back you would connect your turntable right here and then right here is the grounding and then over here you would run the RCAs out from here into your amplifier so this is an external phono preamp so that would go turntable to this to your amplifier and then you're rocking and rolling and you hook some speakers up to it though too CD players. So a CD player is a little bit more straightforward if it's a player. You can tell if it's a player because it has red and white RCAs out. So you can take that, take your CD player, run RCA right into an amplifier and then hook your speakers up and you're rocking and rolling. However, you may hear the term transport. That means you can't hook up a CD player directly to your amplifier unless it has a DAC in it, okay? So if it's just an amplifier and there's no integrated DAC in the amplifier, you can't hook up a CD transport to the amplifier. You would need a DAC. So transport basically means it's offloading the digital decoding from inside the CD player externally. And that may be an external box or that may be inside your integrated amplifier. Either way, there's no RCAs on a true transport. If you're wanting to get into CDs though, you don't have to run out and buy a $500 CD player. You can use a Blu-ray player. Sometimes they have decent DACs inside them and they'll sound pretty good, but you can always optical out of the CD player or digital out. CDs will have a digital or optical output. Some of them will. DVD players will, some of them will. Blu-ray players will, some of them will. And you can run that right into a DAC or run it into an integrated amp if it has a DAC in it. So in that case, it would go CD player to an amplifier to your speakers, or it would go CD transport to a DAC, which could already be inside your amplifier. So it would go CD transport, DAC, then amp, and then speakers. This sounds more complicated than it actually is. Streamers. So I just did a review on the Weem Mini, and it's a little streamer. Hooking that up, you could go directly from the Weem streamer into RCA on your amplifier or your integrated amp or your receiver, anything like that. Boom, you're up and running. Or you can also digital out of the Weem into a DAC or into your receiver or into your integrated amp if it has a DAC in it. So there's a variety of ways that you can hook that up. One would probably opt to go with a optical output if they have a 
more expensive, or a DAC that they really enjoy. Good news is, if you have an amplifier that already has a DAC in it, you can run it analog, which would mean you would go into that red and white connection on the back of your amplifier, or you could try it digitally, so you could go optical out, optical into your amplifier, if you have an internal DAC. And then you can see, hey, which one do I like better? So in that case, we're going streamer directly to amplifier via RCA, or we're going streamer to DAC to amplifier to the speakers. And if the integrated amp already has a DAC in it, you would just go streamer to integrated amplifier via digital optical out and then to speakers. Which way you want to go with your first hi-fi system really depends on what you are thinking you're gonna do in the future. If you're only going to put some speakers up for background music and you're going to be using just your phone, then an amplifier with Bluetooth connection can really be all you need in a pair of speakers or powered speakers that accept Bluetooth. You're set. You don't need any more. But if you think you may start to fall down this rabbit hole of a hobby, you probably want to get something, an amplifier or an integrated amplifier that has multiple inputs so you can bring in a streamer you can bring in a cd player you can bring in a turntable you can have various sources and when you have multiple inputs on an integrated amplifier you can do what's called input switching so you can have them all hooked up at the same time and you'll use your integrated amplifier to switch between the sources to play it through your speakers. So if you think maybe you're gonna be a turntable person in the future, maybe you're gonna get an external CD player or whatever it is, or maybe get an external streamer, you may want something with different inputs or multiple inputs. If you're only going to be doing digital music, like a computer, you may want something like this that already has a DAC internal to it and be done. Maybe you don't need to worry about it. But even if you wanted to bring in an analog source, like a CD player, or a turntable or a tape deck. It does have RCA inputs too. So what you choose should depend on what you think you're going to be using it for. And there's a lot of products out there like the MX-3, like the Emotiva TA-1 that have an internal DAC, that have internal Bluetooth, that have multiple analog inputs, except for this one. That, that one only has one an analog input and has a phono preamp as well. This one does not have a phono preamp. The Emotiva TA1 does have that. That's, I think, $550. One is getting Bluetooth, an internal DAC with USB, which means you can go right from your computer, has a coax digital, has an optical digital, and it has a phono stage, and has preamp outs, and has a subwoofer out. So we're not going to talk about preamps today, but if you ever had a preamp, it would go source, preamp, amplifier, speakers, in that order. Most integrated amplifiers act as a preamp and an amplifier in one box. A little bit easier that way. The great thing about integrated amplifiers that have a few analog inputs open on them is they can grow with you. You can get the integrated amplifier like a TA1 or there's a variety of other products out there, the uh, uh, Denon PMA 600NE. You can get one of those, and it already has internal capabilities with a DAC, with a phono preamp. But if you ever want to try out something that you think may be a little bit of a step up, you can still use that product and now just bring in an external phono preamp or an external DAC. Really, whatever you want. So there's a path forward with a lot of these integrated amplifiers. If you just got something like the Topping MX-3 and you later wanted to get a better DAC and hook up a turntable, you're not doing it on this because you only have so many inputs. Well, there's ways around that too, but again, I don't want to confuse people even more. Powered speakers. Some powered speakers have an internal phono stage, have an internal DAC, and have Bluetooth. And in that case, you're getting everything you could possibly need in one box. The problem with that is if you don't like the sound of it, that's it. You, you can't do anything else. One of the reasons why I like separate components 
is because I can change things. I can try different combinations and I find that there is a lot of times synergy between certain products. It makes it everything just comes together very well. One big happy family. Some people will say that a powered speaker is the way to go, that it's all set up to sound the best. I don't know if I agree with that. I've heard power speakers that I like. I've heard a lot of powered speakers that I don't like. I prefer the separate components. But you don't have to go crazy with the separate components. You can get something like this. Just hook up a pair of speakers and you hook up your source to it, your computer, your CD player, phono preamp. This can really handle four different inputs. Your three digitals and then an analog. So if you have any questions, pop them down into the comments. I will try to get to them, but you can also sign up for Patreon and I'm not showing my Patreon here, but if you sign up for Patreon, I answer every question that's in there and you can always just cancel. I know this can be a little bit intimidating for some folks, but again, don't be intimidated. Nobody knew what they were doing when they first started out. We all had to learn at some point. So don't ever feel bad about asking a question. Because if you don't, you can end up buying something A, you don't need, and B, you don't like. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash CheapAudioMan. Every Saturday night, we have patron-only Zooms. Talk about this stuff. And we have a patron-only Facebook group. You can also use any of the affiliate links. It doesn't cost you any more, and it's a great way to support the channel. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. There's a link in the description. Click on the link, sign up. You get three months for free. I get a couple of dollars. I think I have a Tidal link too. I don't know if it's working or not. So you can try out Tidal. I think they're running a special now. Three months for a buck or two. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Build your first hi-fi system and binge listen and fill yourself with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.